In my search for the best performing SD card for a gaming handheld such as the ASUS ROG Ally or Steam Deck, I ran a bunch of performance tests and the results are pretty shocking. I had to rerun the test several times to make sure I wasn't missing something. Let's get right into it. The ASUS ROG Ally comes installed with a Micron 512GB NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. It's spec to read at 5000 megabytes per second. That's almost 50 times faster than a typical UHS-1 SD card, which can read up to 104 megabytes per second. The Steam Deck uses several manufacturers, including the Kingston 512GB NVMe Gen 3 M.2 SSD. That's spec to read at 2400 megabytes per second, almost 25 times faster than a typical UHS-1 SD card. Now you would think you should pay a premium for an SD card to get performance closer to an SSD, right? Is it worth paying up to 10 times more for a UHS-2 card that reads at 312 megabytes per second versus a UHS-1 SD card at 104 megabytes per second? Well, to answer that question, I compared the load times of three different games across five different storage options. Apex Legends, Battlefield 2042, and Hi-Fi Rush from Xbox Game Pass. As a baseline, I recorded the load times using the built-in Micron SSD of the Asus ROG Ally and compared those results against a range of inexpensive SD cards. The SanDisk Extreme Plus V30A2 card, which claims a read speed of 190 megabytes per second, and a UHS-1 bus speed of 104 megabytes per second. So which is it, 190 or 104? When you read the fine print, to reach 190 megabytes per second requires a special SanDisk card reader, which most of us don't have, so basically it supports 104 megabytes per second, which is roughly 5,000% slower than the Micron M.2 SSD. The second one I tested is the Samsung Pro Plus V30 A2 card, which supports a read speed of 180 megabytes per second and a UHS-1 bus speed of 104 megabytes per second. Again, to reach 180 megabytes per second requires a special Samsung card reader so without it, it supports 104 megabytes per second, approximately 5,000% slower than the SSD. For even cheaper SD cards, I tested the SanDisk Ultra UHS-1 C10 U1 A1 SD card with a read speed of 100 megabytes per second, and the SP Elite UHS-1 C10 U1 SD card with a read speed of 75 megabytes per second. By the way, all this terminology like UHS, V30, V60, A1, A2, can be confusing. In another video, which I'll post, I'll describe all these terms and why they matter or don't for your gaming handheld. So please like and subscribe. For the test setup, the ROG Ally was configured in performance mode, 900p resolution, battery powered. I launched games from the game launcher and stopped the clock at the game's start screen. I ran the load tests a minimum of three times and took the average. With the internal SSD, Apex Legends loads in 34 seconds. With the SanDisk Extreme Plus being 5,000% slower than the SSD, I was kind of expecting load times in the order of minutes. After all, 34 seconds times 5,000% is almost half an hour. This is the shocking part. Apex loaded in 39 seconds. That's only 15% slower than the high-performance SSD. With the Samsung Pro Plus, Apex loads in 36 seconds, which is only 6% slower than the SSD. On the cheaper SD cards, the SanDisk Ultra loads Apex in 41 seconds, which is 21% slower, but keep in mind the SanDisk Ultra is a pretty low-cost card. Finally, the cheapest card is the SP Elite, and it loads Apex in 39 seconds, 15% slower than the SSD. Moving on to Battlefield 2042, the internal SSD loads it in 54 seconds. The SanDisk Extreme Plus loads it in an impressive 67 seconds, 24% slower than the SSD. The Samsung Pro Plus loads it slightly faster at 61 seconds, 13% slower than the SSD. The SanDisk Ultra takes 65 seconds, 20% slower, and the SP Elite loads it in 69 seconds, 28% slower than the SSD. Depending on the game, SD card performance does vary. For example, Hi-Fi Rush. It loads on the SSD in 30 seconds. On the SanDisk Extreme Plus, it takes 47 seconds, 57% slower than the SSD. The Samsung Pro Plus takes 50 seconds, 67% slower. The SanDisk Ultra takes 44 seconds, 
47% slower. And finally, the SP Elite shows the largest variance. It takes 89 seconds, which is almost 200% slower than the SSD. Clearly, the SSD performs better, but it's surprising how close in performance the much slower SD cards are. So I plotted the SSD read pattern for Battlefield 2042. You can see the peaks and valleys as the game is loaded. The maximum read bandwidth is a small burst of 651 megabytes per second midway through, which is far below the ASUS ROG Ally's SSD read bandwidth of 5000 megabytes per second and the Steam Deck's SSD read bandwidth of 2400 megabytes per second. The average read bandwidth is only 56 megabytes per second. On top of this graph, I've superimposed the UHS-1 SD card read bandwidth of 104 megabytes per second. As you can see, there are only five relatively short bursts of read cycles that exceed the bandwidth of the SD card. The majority of the read pattern falls below the SD card's peak bandwidth. It's for this reason that the SD card is only 13 to 28% slower than a high performance SSD. To summarize, the best option of course is to upgrade your internal SSD. However, it's still handy to be able to plug in low cost SD cards and still get pretty good load performance. With Apex, you're adding 2 to 7 seconds of additional load time. With Battlefield, you're adding 7 to 15 seconds. And with Hi-Fi Rush, you're adding 14 to 20 seconds of additional load time. Excluding the SP Elite card, which added another 59 seconds. Something I'll be avoiding. The cheaper SanDisk Ultra UHS-1 SD card has similar read performance to the more expensive SanDisk Extreme Plus and Samsung Pro Plus cards. Where there's a bigger difference is in the write performance for storing games onto SD cards. The SanDisk Extreme Plus and Samsung Pro Plus are both V30 cards that support 30 megabytes per second write speeds versus the SanDisk Ultra and SP Elite, which are U1 cards that support only 10 megabytes per second. Keep in mind that when you're downloading from Xbox Game Pass or EA, quite often the download rates are limited to between 1 to 10 megabytes per second anyway so you may not see a significant benefit with the V30 cards. So I'd recommend any of these three SD cards with preference for the V30 cards if the price is similar. Unlike the Steam Deck and other gaming handhelds, the Asus ROG Ally has SD card reliability problems likely due to the location of the card reader near the heat exhaust. I have another video describing a workaround. The link is at the end of this video. When using the workaround with an external Ugreen SD card reader, I got identical load time performance when compared to the Ally's internal SD card reader. And to get the internal card reader to work, I used a 64GB V30 A1 SD card, which is reliable for me. For larger games and longer running tests, I used the Ugreen SD card reader. Also, when choosing an external SD card reader, make sure the performance can meet at least UHS-1 bus standards. For example, when using this older SanDisk D33 D21 SD card reader, the performance was significantly worse than the Ugreen by more than a factor of two, so I've excluded it from this testing. I hope this video helps. Please like and subscribe, and have a good day.